nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, right? Well, early this year, our research team did something that sounds impossible. We broke the speed of light. And honestly, it wasn't that hard. In fact, you can do it from your back garden. If you take a laser pointer, aim it at the moon, and then quickly flick your hand, you'd see a laser spot travel across the surface of the moon faster than the speed of light. Hang on, is that even allowed? Didn't Einstein say nothing can travel faster than the speed of light? Well, yes, but here's the trick. The spot isn't a physical thing, it's an illusion. The individual photons that make up the spot have to move at the speed of light, but the pattern they illuminate doesn't. This illusion of motion also occurs in a Mexican wave at a stadium. Although the fans don't move from right to left, the coordination of many fans makes it look like a wave is moving around the stadium. We call this illusion synthetic motion. And it was this idea of synthetic motion that got us thinking. If an object looks like it moves faster than the speed of light, does it behave like it's really faster than light? So, starting from the earlier thought experiment, we replaced the laser pointer with a high-powered pulsed laser. And instead of the moon, we used a nanoscale sample thinner than a red blood cell. The top layer of the sample is made from a glass-like material called indium tin oxide, while the bottom layer is made from gold. Now normally, the sample is super dull and unreflective. However, when it's hit by an intense laser pulse, it becomes highly reflective for just a fraction of a fraction of a second. This happens because electrons inside the indium tin oxide absorb energy from the light pulse and heat up extremely rapidly, changing the reflectivity, before then cooling down again just as quickly. By focusing a high energy laser pulse, we can heat up a really small region of our sample, creating a tiny temporary mirror, which we can then use to scatter a second pulse into a range of angles and colors in a process called space-time diffraction. Now this weird process can only occur if we create an object like our mirror that's really small and exists for only a very brief amount of time. And, just like on the moon, we can make our laser spot, and therefore the mirror, move as fast as we want, even faster than the speed of light. Except unlike before, our laser spot creates an object that we can now study, that interacts with light. So, what happens when light is scattered from an object moving faster than the speed of light? Hmm, well, this is a bit of a tough one, so let's rewind and think about a more familiar situation where waves scatter from a moving object. Imagine standing by a road when a car drives past you. The engine sounds higher pitched as it approaches and then lower as it moves away. This happens because of the Doppler effect. As the car moves, it squashes the sound waves ahead of it and then stretches out the ones behind it, changing the pitch we hear. The same thing happens with light. If a mirror moves towards you, light is reflected bluer, and if it moves away from you, the light becomes redder. However, this effect is only noticeable when the speed of the object is similar to the speed of the waves. And since light travels so much faster than sound, you won't see your reflection change colour unless your mirror can move as fast as light. Hmm. Now back to the experiment. If we make the mirror move slower than the speed of light, we observe the Doppler effect. Blue light is scattered forward, while red light is scattered backward. However, when we make the mirror move faster than the speed of light, something strange happens. Blue light is now scattered backwards, while red light is scattered forwards. Weird. When our mirror travelled faster than the speed of light, the science flipped. In this case, we measured the inverse Doppler effect. Now an inverse Doppler car going past you would sound like... Okay. Cool. But so what? Well, we showed that we can use synthetic motion to easily explore phenomena that would otherwise require relativistic or impossible faster than light objects. This means that in the future, we may be able to explore how light behaves near relativistic objects like black and white holes, and even Hawking radiation, the process in which black holes create light from empty space, all without leaving our cosy lab. Beyond exploring pure physics, 
Controlling light colour and direction from a nanoscale sample is really important for a huge variety of emerging technologies. Unfortunately, unlike real faster than light motion, it won't let us build a time machine. Yet. Finally, a huge thank you to all the fantastic scientists involved in making this work happen, and I really hope you found this video interesting. If you'd like to learn more about this work, the paper can be freely accessed online at Nature Communications, and feel free to reach out to me. Thanks so much for watching.